Hello and welcome to my channel. This is going to be a slightly shorter one. It's a charcoal vignette or a wolf chasing an elk. I'm going to show you how I did it. Let's start. I'll do the sketch first. The size of the paper is around 9 times 12 inches but the drawing itself is going to be a little bit smaller because like I said it's a vignette so it's not going to take up all of the paper I'm just going to make a vignette in the middle, roughly in the middle of the paper in the center of the paper um, I'm working on the wolf now and as you can see this is pretty small not much room for detail but I'll include I'll try to include as much detail as possible as the size allows me. Mostly I'm just trying to capture the movement and the atmosphere of the drawing. And I'm drawing the elk now which is a little bit larger obviously for two reasons. First because it's a larger animal and also it's a little bit closer to us, to, to our point of view. And. Um, like I said, these are slightly smaller sketches, but and, and there's, there's not that much room for a mistake. But it, it's not like I need a great deal of precision here. It's not like I'm drawing a portrait and exact proportions are super important. So as long as I can make them look sort of like the animals I'm trying to draw, it'll be fine. I'm putting down some charcoal powder here. And I'm going to try to spread it evenly. I will use this charcoal powder, charcoal powder to create some kind of a base stone for my vignette. And then I'll work on the lighter and darker portions as I go along. And I did the sketch with uh, Kohinoor Jukonda Silky Black Pencil. For most of the drawing process I'm going to be using either that or a Kohinoor soft charcoal pencil. And in addition to that I also use charcoal powder like I just did here and vine charcoal maybe. But mostly just charcoal pencils. So I've spread the charcoal powder and now I can start working on the on the animals. I switched to that soft charcoal pencil now and I'm putting in some darker details here. When I say darker details like for example that hind leg it's, it's in the shadow or maybe uh, some of the shadow areas like behind the ears or uh, under the neck or in between some uh, larger folds of fur. And I'm trying my best to draw all of these small details even though uh, it's a very small size and my pencils are not super sharp. These are slightly softer pencils which are more prone to breaking and I'm kind of reluctant to sharpen them all the way every single time so the the shape of the wolf is coming up nicely now I need to work on the on the texture and the, the appearance of the fur I'm just going to cover everything with a little bit of shading using a charcoal pencil and I'll try to work out the contrast between the lighter and darker areas a bit later. For that I'm going to use a Kohino pencil eraser and of course I'm going to use that in a combination with, with my pencils. Wolves appear mostly grey when you look at them, when you look at their fur, but it's mostly a combination of dark and white hair, or darker and lighter hair and that gives us that grayish appearance I suppose except for the fact that some parts of the wolf's body are a little bit lighter than the others and 
that's the case uh, with this area around the jaw and the ear here and I'm trying to clean that up using a pencil eraser this is a Kohino eraser and a pencil also the belly area is a little bit lighter and I'm just using the pencil eraser not just to make some areas a bit lighter but also to work on the texture of the fur a little bit more make it look a bit more interesting now the ground here is supposed to look like it's covered with snow deep snow uh, but I know that it looks kind of dark now so at this point I kind of decided to put in a few trees in the background when I was doing my sketch initially I wasn't really sure whether I was going to include any objects in the background but eventually I decided that I wanted to have a few more trees here a few more objects in the scene so just a few simple shapes of trees in the background and I'm going to add a couple more all the way to the left and I'm using a piece of vine charcoal to draw their shape because vine charcoal is good for that it's uh, very quick and easy to draw trees with it I'm going to do a bit of blending to soften some of these marks and I don't want I don't want them to be too well defined in terms of texture because they are they are a part of the background after all so there's no need for them to be too elaborate now here in the foreground on the snow I'm going to draw a few blades of dried dry grass here and there maybe some dry bushes which are kind of sticking out sticking out of the snow and I'm doing this to make the foreground a bit more interesting but also to create a feeling of depth just to have some objects in front of the in front of the wolf and the elk so that I can convey that feeling of depth and distance and finally with this pencil eraser I can take away value from some parts of the ground here and make make it look like uh, some parts of that are, are a little bit lighter than the others and make it look like or, or I can at least try to make it look more like snow so what I do here is basically I just drag my pencil gently taking away a bit of value I can also use a kneaded eraser for that and you can see that uh, while I'm doing that the shape of the terrain is starting to is starting to show the foreground is starting to take a bit more shape but it's um, I'm just mostly experimenting with lighter and darker shapes to see what sort of shapes I can come up with although probably I uh, th there's no need to overdo it because the main focus of the drawing will be the wolf and the elk so once I have a few of those uh, a few of those clusters or, or clamp, uh, clumps of dry hair uh, dry grass rather I can I can consider my foreground done and I can move on to the other animal again I'm using the charcoal pencil here to put in some darker areas and that in combination with a harder silky black pencil should probably give me both the range of value and the amount of detail I need to make this rather small drawing 
look as realistic and as detailed as as I can make it I'm doing a bit of refining with a pencil eraser and now I'm using that uh, I'm using that eraser to draw some some snow. I want to make it look like it's snowing. So just a few dots here and there and I'm kind of varying the size a little bit. In order to uh, complete my scene to to create that atmosphere, a winter atmosphere. Now I'm back to working on the elk. The head in particular has lots of smaller details like the eyes, the nostrils, the mouth and things like that. And as for the as for the horns, I definitely need to do I definitely need to draw these with a silky black pencil rather than the soft charcoal pencil because I want slightly cleaner edges there. In some of the darker bits, darker areas, I can use the soft charcoal pencil but I'll use it sparingly. And uh, as I was shading the background, my idea was for the for the horns to be kind of sticking out of the vignette. Because when you draw vignettes like this, you want to make the shape look kind of irregular, like the background is fading into the white of the paper. And what you can do sometimes is you can allow some of the main elements to stick out. Here I did a bit of shading with a charcoal pencil to establish a slightly darker base tone for the elk's body. And I'm going to blend that with a brush. Now I need to do a bit of refining. I want the edges to be clean and I want a more defined texture. I know this is a very small drawing here but uh, I can still produce a bit of interesting texture. I can still make this look like fur. I mean the wolf itself is probably around two inches in size and you can see that I've managed to produce a decent amount of de detail on it. So I'm going to try to do the same here. I'm trying to capture that appearance of a long warm fur on the elk's body. And uh, I'm using the, the this darker charcoal pencil not only for the shadow areas but for the for the areas where this, uh, the the fur is simply darker. Like for example, uh, the the head and the neck area is a little bit darker in color than the rest of the body uh, than than the fur on the rest of the body. I can also use that darker pencil to define some shadow areas to explain the shape of the of the animal's body a little bit better but I'm also using it to add a bunch of these smaller marks to indicate some smaller shadow areas in between clumps of fur so that I can create a realistic looking texture of the fur and the lower part of the neck here is 
fairly dark not only because the fur on the neck is darker but because it's also facing down facing away from the light source I'm doing a bit of blending with a brush and the good thing about brushes especially these hard bristle brushes when I use them for blending marks that I created in order to imitate fur they won't destroy the texture I try to create completely they will soften it a little bit and I'll still be left with a lot of the marks that I initially drew and that actually helps me draw a far more realistic looking fur without actually putting in too much time and effort into it if I were to blend with a tutilian I would actually destroy a lot of that fine texture that I tried to produce so brushes are probably a better choice here again I'm using a pencil eraser to clean up some of the edges I really want clean edges around the animal I want the animal to stand out against the background and I want the animals to capture the attention of the viewer immediately right now I'm adding a bit more snow using a pencil eraser just some white dots here and there I'm varying their size, their shape kind of the direction in which uh, uh, the snow is uh, falling onto the ground and I think um, this is starting to look a bit more uh, like I initially wanted it to look it's like a winter hunt for a hungry wolf here on this buttocks area I'm going back because this is an area of longer fur and I'm going back and putting in some, some of these darker marks to indicate shadow areas in between larger clumps of fur and of course this transition between the hip area and the waist area uh, th that's, this needs to be darker, There's, there needs to be more shadow there so when you're drawing fur you can't draw every single hair but it's mostly the suggestions that capture the attention of the viewer and um, manage to convince them to that they're looking at something very detailed and very realistic but when the drawing of an animal is smaller like this you can get away with using far fewer of these uh, marks, fewer of these suggestions I'm just putting down some finishing touches on the elk's body and dragging my pencil over it just to create some random texture and then I'm going back in with a soft charcoal pencil to reinforce some of the shadow areas and to make sure that that the animal has a nice range of value but in addition to the range of value of course I'm always trying to produce a realistic looking texture as well So like I said this is a slightly shorter video but if you like it don't forget to give me a like and comment and subscribe if you want to. If you want to see longer videos you should go to my Patreon. Um, I'm putting down the finishing touches and now I have to put my signature so, so that I could somehow balance balance out the drawing so I put it all the way on the right and this is the way it looks I hope you like it I want to thank you for watching and of course as always I'm going to see you in the next one bye for now